Hello folks, it's me again for this third part of this this new updated video for more April 18, 2022. And we left off with one of the previous titles that, that came out from the days of Columbia Pictures Home Entertainment and RCA Columbia Pictures Home Video of 1983. Now we're going to move on to the titles that was released in 1984. And you know 1984, they have some changes, like, uh, for the box packaging. Instead of, like, having, like, three sides opens from, from the bottom and the top, still remains, like, open up this side permanently since then. Then also in, the, around, nine, around, er, around early 1984, they started, like, putting, like, beta hi-fis on those tapes. And the, in the square VHS logos, they put it in the line VHS logos. But in the early 1984, stick label VHSs, they started having like the, uh, they still have the square logos on those stick labels. So they discontinued it in the spring of 1984. <sighs> and also in mid-1984, also the, you, you're going to get to see the um, approximately minutes on it. Then they then they, instead of like putting down BH or BE on the cat or the catalog numbers, they put down just numbers instead by late 1984. And more titles putting in the closed captioning of the hearing impaired. That's what they did back in 1984. So let's begin with one of those some of the titles were just released in never before released in early 84. Some of the titles were already released. Previously titled, yep. Let's start with the 1959 Suddenly Last Summer with the great Elizabeth Taylor, Montgomery Cliff, and, Liz and Catherine Hepburn. You know, Elizabeth Taylor and Montgomery Cliff did the uh, Place in the Sun in 1951. That's the spine until they changed, like, the words logo on it. Still in black and white. This suddenly last summer is out the same time as with the 83 Studios volume that had the popular curly shuffle on it by Jump in the Saddle. This tape was printed it on the 11th week of 1984. Around that time when the Beanie and Cecil tapes were just permanently coming out at the time. And they also they also released some of the like these more He-Man tapes by that time. Now we got here a Humph I got here a Humphrey Bogart movie that was made from Columbia Pictures called Sharara in 1943 that has with Bruce Benedict, J. Carol Nash, and the great L Lloyd Bridges. Originally, this movie came out on VHS and Beta back in uh, early 1982. This is the 1984 reissue, early 84, and this tape is not exactly the, the original. I'll show you what this tape looks like. Some of the sticker labels are falling off. Here's the 1985 re sticker label reprint. Mm -hmm. That's mostly from 1986. This tape was printed it on the sixth week of 1987, known as February 3rd, 1987. As soon as I put this away, yep. It's looking at you, kid. Well, some people love Humphrey Bogart, some people hate Humphrey Bogart. Even my brother likes Humphrey Bogart. I like them in Casablanca and the Maltese Falcon. Next one we got here, a Western fun called Bite the Bullet in 1975. Stars with Gene Hackman. Kangas Bergen is Edgar Bergen's daughter, and James Corbin in this in this Western fun classic from 1975. At the time, it was only nine years old in 1984. The same year when Jaws and One Full of the Cuckoo's Nest is one of the best pictures of that year. Show you what this the cassette looks like. Mm -hmm. Richard Pryor here and now had that release, and he was with Dustin Hartman and Tootsie. It was released around the time in early '84. Here's the uh, R, here's a red tag on it. Mm -hmm. 
This tape was printed it on the 21st week of 1984. At the end of the tape has the different FBI warning screen. They use the uh, from the uh, of uh, the laser disc FBI warning screen. The one I saw it in a in a three series video disc volume one from 1983. The next one we got here in the 84 tapes, Long, Long Ago Tomorrow, stars with Maca McDowell, yep. Made in 1970. This is not a subtitle or something like that, yep. Subtitles. Show you what this tape looks like. They still have the UPC code in mid-84, printed on the 11th week of 1984. This is like an ex-rental. Yep. Next one is the uh, a foreign, foreign classic film called Bob the Gambler from 1955. And then it was just re and then it was just renewed in 1981. And it says PG on it. Mm -hmm. This is not made 1981. Originally was made 1955. But but like the Columbia Distribute uh, renewed it in, in around 1981. On this tape I found out I used to have this I used to have this on VHS when I lived in Queens. This tape was printed it on the seventh week of 1984. At the end of this cassette it has the 1979 FBI warning screen at the end in black and white. The one he used in Three Seekers Volumes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 back in, early, back in the early 80s. And they used that in cold blood because Mr. Jordan and Mr. Smith goes to Washington. Now we got here a movie that stars with the young Dudley Moore in 30 is Dangerous Age Cynthia. In 1967, before Dudley Moore did Arthur, stars with Eddie Foy Jr., the same Eddie Foy's name Bob Hope played in The Seven Little Foys in 1955. This, this seems like a good uh, comedy classic from the late 60s. I didn't know Eddie Foy Jr. was alive in the, during of the 60s. This movie came out around uh, early mid 84, something around. Around April. And this is the first time RCA Columbia Pictures Home Video sticker label started and put the Lines logo on it. Just like they did around like those 1980. So I think they did it around late 1983 for Three Seekers Volumes uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. Had that, except for Volume 5. It was not a reprint till mid 84. This tape was approximately printed it on the 23rd week of 84. Next one we got here with Charles Bronson. I don't mean Death Wish, but a stone killer in 1973. Co-stars at Morton Balson, the one from Psycho. This is an early 80, this is the mid-84 original. Sadly to say, this tape is kind of like a little reprint. I see the, um... This tape is not exactly the original. This is a reprint around, uh... Around late 1984. This tape was printed it on the second week of 1985. Yep. And also around around mid nineteen eighty four, they changed the FBI warning screens from the nineteen eighty three warning screen into the nineteen eighty four FBI warning screen. I think they used the warning. I think they used the eighty four warning screen on He Man Volume Eight Nine Three Series Volume Nine. The tape reprint with Sadie Thompson and Against Old Odds, something like that. This one we got here is a sense of loss, some 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 kind of like a war documentary in 1972. Yep, 
made 50 years ago, yep. And this is like the documentary of like the sorrow and the pity that came out on VHS and Bader in 1981. Show you what this tape looks like. Mm -hmm. There's the 1984 sticker label. I think I see 83. Yep. This tape was printed on the 20th week of 1984. Who says VHSs were better than Beta? Beta is so small than the VHSs. And here's this movie I got from when I was in the uh, from the Pottsville Library last year. Mosca do not believe in tears. Some kind of like the uh, subtitles series. Yep, Academy Award winner Best Foreign Film Language Film 1980. It has the 19, and, and it has the 1982 warning screen at the end of this tape. This is like, uh, this is the 45th week of 1984. Yep. No, no, I think it's the 45th week of... 1986. Sadly to say, I had to switch copies because my other copy broke. Now I got here another foreign film. It's in black and white called Closely Watched It Watched the Train from 1966 in black and white. This came out in mid-84. Yep. Same time it was out with with the uh, the Night Three Circus volume and He Man Volume Seven. Yep, they use like the 1980 original uh, tape uh, made of of Scotch blank. This tape was printed it on the 29th week of 1984. That was around by June or something. But well, we're getting close, like mid late '84, when RCA Columbia Pictures Home Video added the. Um, the minutes on the boxes. Yep. Now we got the 1965 Western comedy classic of Caparoo. Academy Award winner Best Actor. That has Whitley Marvin. This is one of Jane Fonda's finest performance. Co-stars with Nat King Cole and Stubby K. The one who's singing the movie. That was by at the time when RCA Columbia Pictures Home Video changed it from VH or BE. Until the uh, the number sign, like they used when uh, when three Suga's volumes one two three four is actually a reprint, and either it seems like old times and neighbors. Yep, and it didn't have the minutes on it. Originally, Caparoo first came out in VHS and Beta back in 1981. However, this is the 84 reissue, and this is the 86 reprint. I see a sticker label from 85. This tape was printed in 86. This tape was printed it on the 11th week of 1986. This is the exact copy I used to have when I lived in New York that I got it from 99th Street when it was going out of business back in 2001. I mean 2006. And now I'm going to show you some more of the 1984 VHS tapes. Just hold on. I could have been a contender, Charlie. I could have been somebody on the waterfront, 1954. Now we got more of the 1984 of these RCA Columbia Pictures Home Video titles. They started put down the minutes on it, and then they, instead of like putting down like VH or BE, they put down like numbers instead. Yep. 
And they had different FBI warning screens, sometimes 82, sometimes 83, sometimes 84, but they probably did discontinue the 1979 warning screen at the end of those tapes since early 84. Let's start with one of the best films of 1954, one of Marlon Brand's performance is On the Waterfront. The winner of the 1954 the 1954 winner of eight Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Best Actor. On the Waterfront, this is one of the greatest movies of all times. This film called stars with Carl Moulton, Lee J. Cobb, and Rod Steiger, introducing Edie Marie Saint. The best quote in the movie, Martin Brandle says, You don't understand, I couldn't have class. I couldn't be a contender, I couldn't be somebody. Instead, I'm a bum, which is why I am, and let's face it. It was you, Charlie. That was the second line Robert De Niro said in the 1980 uh, Raging Bull, directed by Martin Scorsese. Show you what this tape looks like. Mm -hmm. This tape was printed it on the 33rd week of 1984. That was like a little bit before when It Happened One Night made the first home video debut. This is a little bit before Marlon Brando did The Godfather, not until, um, not until the 1970s. And we got here a movie that stars with Albert Finney in The Dresser in 1983, called Stars with Tom Courtney. Yep. This is the mid-84 release. Yep. This is one of Albert Finney's finest performances that he did since the murder of the Ento Express, Shoot the Moon, and the musical Strava Dancer of Annie, which, which co-stars with Kel Burnett. Here's what this tape looks like. Mm -hmm. This tape was printed on the 31st week of 1984. This was in the close captioning of the hearing impaired. Yep. God, I love Albert Finney. Don't forget, On the Waterfront was reissued in 1986 and during, during the early 1990s from part of the Columbia Classics series. Here's the last one of the VH and the BE's uh, catalog. This is a subtitle called Love, of a Love is a Blonde in 1965. Some kind of like a sexual comedy. Yep. Sexual film. Yep. And it says a black and white film sub that in, in English they stopped doing a black and white film not until not until late 83. And this tape doesn't have the original opening, it has a reprint opening. This tape was printed it on the fourth week of 1989. It starts with the FBI warning screen at the beginning and then RCA Columbia Pictures Home Video logo. And that really sucks. Had to be stuck with this copy. Excuse me. By 1984 of the uh, the Columbia Pictures, it did release Ghostbusters, one of the smash hit of 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 that of that year. Here's against old odds. Stars with Jeff Bridges. He was the son of the actor of Lloyd Bridges, and he was a he was the younger brother of Bo Bridges. Co-stars with Rachel Ward, she was with Steve Martin and Detman Dunwear Plaid. There's James Woods, you might know him in the movie of Martin Scorsese's Casino in 1995, the one who plays Lester Diamond. Yep. This is the first time around late 1984 they started putting, like, some hit movies into the VHS Hi-Fi since the Against All Odds and The Natural with Robert Redford. That was the first film when Columbia... When, like, Trisaw released it in late around 1984. And this tape at the end, it, at the end, it has the 1984 warning screen at the end. Yep. This tape was printed it on... I'm looking for the print date. The... 47 week of 1984. A little previous, well, one one of the other previous videos I did, I showed you the against old odds. That was from uh, from Good Times Home Video, recorded on the uh, 
the SP or was it the LP? I don't remember. Here's Getting Straight with Elliot Gould and Kangas Bergen in 1970 comedy. Yep. And for the sticker labels in 1984, and well, they changed it from 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 the fresh paper into like a into like a different kind of paper for the sticker labels. Yep, this tape was actually printed it on. Thirty-seven week of nineteen eighty-four. Yep. And here's like the late nineteen eighty-four VHS of this rare nineteen rare Columbia film was made in the early nineteen thirties, like the Criminal Code in nineteen thirty-one. Stars Walter Houston. Phillips Holmes and Boris Karloff that he did that he did Frankenstein back in 1931. Yep. Here's what this tape looks like. Mm-hmm. This tape was out at the same time as with the 10 Three Studios volume and it happened one night. And Mosker on the Hudson. Yep. They still have the UPC code on it. Yep. And they stopped doing it around late 1984. This tape was printed it on the 42nd week of 1984. And finally, a subtitle called Swept Away was made in 1980 from Cinema 5. Originally, this movie came out on VHS back in 1980. Yep, now now we're taking it back into like one of the early 80s releases when they made it to like a reissue in 1984. Sadly to say, this tape is not exactly the original. This is a reprint. This is the 1987 sticker labels. This tape was printed it on the second week of 1989. And at the end of this tape has the 1979 FBI warning scream at the end. That includes all my 1984 VHS tapes, and now we're gonna go to the ones in 1985 later in a uh, in in the fourth part. They get they're gonna have some like a little changes around around 1985. Probably they're gonna have like putting more titles into VHS Hi-Fi, so it's like they did with the the Beta Hi-Fi in 1984, and also. They're going to put the barcode on the bottom of those boxes, yep, and more titles in the closed captioning of the hearing impaired category, yep. I'm going to tell you like all the details later about 1985 tapes. So I hope you enjoy going through those 1984 titles, and I'll see you later for the 1985 VHS titles. Until then, try to subscribe if you like these videos or not. Bye.